I have been shooting with this lens for about a year now and the only questions I have about this lens are why isn't this a Canon lens and why doesn't Canon create lenses, quality lenses like this for their APS-C sensor users? Because honestly, this is the best lens for the Canon EOS R7. Let's go. All right, I've repeated this a thousand times on various different Facebook groups and various different forums. When someone comes up and asks, I just got the R7, what is the first lens that I should buy for this camera? And my answer is always the same. If it's not for birding, if it's not for taking photos of wildlife or birds, this is the lens you want to buy. This is the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 Arts. This is the lens that everyone shooting with an APS-C sensor camera like the EOS R7 needs, needs, not might need, but needs because this is like the nifty 50 but way more versatile. I have used this lens to shoot weddings, everyday stuff, product shots, portraits, you name it. It has been everywhere with me during this year and it still remains my favorite go-to lens today. It basically lives on my camera for about 90% of the time. A couple of days ago we went out to the city with Maddie to do some street photography and excluding few exceptions this was the lens that was on my camera, the R7, the entire time. Now, why do I love this lens so much? Because it covers the best focal lengths for video when you are shooting with APS-C sensor camera. It comes from 18 all the way to 35, and when it covers those 18, 24, and 35, it covers basically everything that I need to create a short cinematic film on my R7. And it does all of that with the f1.8 aperture, which is crucial when you're shooting with an APS-C sensor camera because the sensor is smaller and you don't have as much light coming into the sensor, so you need to have a wide, wide aperture. And also what you get with that f1.8 aperture is that silky smooth background bokeh that really pops up the subject of the video or the photo from the background. And when you're making videos the separation between the subject and the background is always one of the most crucial things if you want to achieve those cinematic results. The image that this lens produces is sharp from all the way from f1.8 but it gets even better if you stop it down to let's say f2 or f2.2 and it still does not sacrifice the beautiful blurry bokeh background. There has also been some questions about the focus breathing of this lens that when you zoom in from 18 to 35 or vice versa that does it lose focus and does it go out of focus not that much. Nothing that the autofocus of R7 couldn't handle. I tested this with Maddie when we went out to shoot the video, so we can check the footage right now. Okay, so this is the focus breathing on Sigma 1835 f1.8 art. That is Maddie. I'm now at 18 millimeters and I got the focus on his eyes. And let's push it all the way to 35 and back to 18. I'm doing it pretty fast so you can see it that the focus breathing is not an issue with this lens. Can you feel the focus breathing issue there? You can, me neither. And there you have it. I don't think that this amount of focus breathing is something that should turn you away from buying this lens. I have made dozens of videos already with this lens and there hasn't been a single time that the focus breathing has been an issue for me. All right, we got the video side covered, but how about photography? Well. 18 to 35 is like the best possible all-arounder if you want the wide open aperture. I know that Canon has the 18 to 150 but it's significantly darker and even if it has the image stabilization on that lens it's still not the same as the 18 to 35 with the f1.8 aperture. First of all the 18 to 150 doesn't bring you that silky smooth background because it doesn't have as wide aperture the photos just don't look the same. The 18mm is perfect for landscapes and when zoomed into 35 it becomes a 56mm equivalent on a full frame so it is perfect for some portrait photography also. With the f1.8 aperture you don't need as much light as you would need well let's say with the 18 to 150. And when you pair this lens up with the 50mm f1.8 you know the nifty 50 you get yourself a perfect couple which starts from 18mm and goes all the way to 50mm all 
compatible with the f1.8 aperture. Okay, the one downside that this lens has is the fact that this is not image stabilized. But when you pair it up with the R7, which has a fantastic IBIS, and you update the firmware of this lens, the IBIS of the R7 works perfectly with this lens, no matter if you're taking photos or shooting video. Now, if you want to know how to update the firmware of this lens, I will link a video at the end of this video so you can check it out. Personally, I have done and tested this lens with the IBIS of the R7 a dozen times and yeah, the results are absolutely fantastic. Okay, and the next question is the price because this has to be an expensive lens, right? Because if it's perfect and it's heavy, it has to be expensive. Well, it's not. It's around 500 bucks second hand. Some people have found this lens brand new in a box for $350. That's like, that's like a bargain. That's basically like stealing a lens. So if you're gonna keep your eyes open on eBay or wherever you shop, you will find this lens for about 500 bucks second hand. And even though this lens was introduced over 10 years ago, they still sell it brand new for around $800 or $900. And when you compare that price to whatever comes closest to this lens from Canon, the RF 15-35 f2.8 L version is something like $2,500. So yeah, do yourself a favor and get this for your R7. Because basically when I told you the price, you just ran out of excuses why you should not get this lens. Now, if you got some questions about this lens or if you want to know something that I haven't covered in this video or in the previous videos, drop a comment down below because I love doing requested videos on topics like lenses as good as this. But that's all I have for you guys for this time. If you're interested in this lens, links are down below. And if you are interested in updating the firmware of this lens, go check this video out because that explains the entire procedure and shows you the results. But other than that, thanks as always for watching and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.